the Sam Ruff and my lovely image of this Sankofa with this fabulous blue sky. Um, I've really been loving painting with uh, cerulean blue uh, chromium at the moment and I've squeezed some fresh chromium out this morning so let's see if there's some left. Oh yeah, it's so beautiful. It's not really um, looking like an Australian kind of sky. So I think I'll add to it some lovely ultramarine. So I'll put some ultramarine there. And I think that this sky, my image, is somewhere between the two. So I need some fresh ultramarine, cerulean chromium. All right, have I got enough paint? Yes, worth doing all of that before starting to paint because you do not want to stop in the middle and have to deal with the um, paint issues because your painting dries. Now, I've got an enormous flat brush. I could just spray it or I could use water to put it on. The paper is slightly elevated. I've got a really big towel um, just underneath here. So it's ever so slightly elevated just because of the way I bunched the towel up. Dump that one and go straight in for, wet this brush, straight in for some of this lovely <laughs> ultramarine. Put it on here and put some on there. All right, this is just gonna go way too light. So I'm just gonna tip this excess moisture off. That's better and go back in ultramarine and put some down here and come in with the chromium might leave some light bits in the sky getting less as I come towards the horizon line and then I'm going to put some of that chromium in the foreground. Okay, bit of gravity. It's beautiful down there and it's looking a little on the messy side up there. So I think I'll drip water and make it move so it's a little more uh, softer in the sky. I don't mind a bit of action, but I don't really want to um, just putting on a big angle to drip all the drips off. This cardboard doesn't like it. It's cardboard that I've coated with a bit of acrylic. It just shows up a little better in uh, videos. It's not what I like to often paint on. Oh, that's better. That's just lovely. Now into that, I can get rid of this thick old flat brush now. Into that, I can now drop some warmth because I'm going to be making the tree branch, a bit of magenta over there. So I'm going to be making, I'm just uh, adding some ultramarine to that. And then I'm going to just drip that into the sky. Just a little bit of warmth. Um, and that way I'm incorporating the purple that I'll use in the tree into the background. I like that idea. Okay, I splattered and now I'm going to do a lovely big angle again. And if they don't move. Oh, they moved to the tensiest bit. Oh, so pretty. They're not moving enough. So I'm going to grab some of that chromium and put some chromium drips in just into the area where I put that purple. And it's really wet, so I'm going to get those to move about. All right, I quite like that. Grab a tissue to keep it on an angle and I'm dragging the tissue around the tape. Oops, didn't mean to take the bottom off. Okay, nice. That purple. 
purple will be quite subtle by the end. I'm going to rotate it and tip it in the opposite direction for a minute. So while I'm holding it there, I'm just going to um, think about my image. And uh, it's got fabulous darks, which will be really a joy to paint in. And so I'm going for a gray, um, but a purple gray. So I'm gonna mix up a purple and then I'm gonna gray it down with some yellow and hopefully get um, a lovely purpley gray. The um, Angophras can have a pinkish hue to them. So that's what I'm thinking will look lovely. Just going to hold it for another minute on this angle so I know that I don't get any big backgrounds in my sky. And while I'm doing that, I'm, I'm running my eye over the trunk, where I'm going to paint it, where it starts at, at the bottom. And um, give, really focusing on how that looks. Now, often with trees, I like to put the foliage in first. But because this is an angle where I'm looking up the tree, it's all branches and there's a tiny bit of um, foliage. So I'm going to reverse that order. Okay, that's long enough, making that paint move. Put my image back down. Quite happy with that sky. It's a little bit interesting. And I mentioned that I'm going to, just getting it, just a scrap piece of, watercolor paper I mentioned I'm going to make a purple so over here I've got a purple oh it's such a blue purple and then I'm going to add this is oh a bit of water this is some core Indian yellow so it's a real orange um, yellow and I'm going to mix that in because I'm after a purpley grey. That was way too much. It's gone into a green grey. So go back to the magenta. Too much magenta. Go back to the blue. I think I'll get rid of this brush. Just move this one out of the way. And put a stack of this. marine into the mix all right now we've gone back into the purple zone and we are so looking very purpley <laughs> and I'm actually after a purple gray so I'm gonna add more purple more blue I'm after a purpley gray those angophoras are part gray and part there's little bits of beautiful amounts of pink. Okay, how's that color? Oh, that's, that's pretty good. I might add a dot of the yellow just to gray it back down again. Now, it needs to be dark enough. And when you do a big swatch, you get a better indication of how dark the color is. So it's really lovely, but I haven't made it dark enough bit of a shame because I really need to redo it. So this fabulous ultramarine, it's French ultramarine, has been sitting in the water and just getting all lovely and soupy for me, which means it's beautifully dark. That's wonderful. Okay, mix that in. Now I'm going darker and I'm in um, this beautiful blue gray and I'm going to add a small amount of that yellow. Oh, how's that? Dark and it's a purple dark. I love it. All right. I'm going to paint into this um, wet surface. I don't mind that I get some lovely fuzzy edges. I'm going to get a bigger brush. I'm hoping to get more done. So I'd like to paint with this one here and I'll just remove a bit of the moisture on my towel and 
just load up. Oh, and I can see immediately I'm going to get about this much of the trunk painted. All right, back to the mixing. Get enough paint. At least I'm getting faster at the mixing because I'm becoming more and more familiar with the quantities. Oh, I might add a little bit of the um, beautiful chromium. Oh, what the hell, put all the chromium in. All right, beautiful. Then add some of the yellow, um, but it's not yellow. All right, now it doesn't have enough red. Pop in a bit of magenta. And I'm going to this fabulous color. All right, back to the checking. All right, some, some very blue. Put some more yellow in. I want that gray look. <laughs> All right, now I've got more paint. Check the color again. It's really, really, really blue. So, uh oh, oh. Um, more um, magenta. I'm just going to wash that one because I made a mess. I think I just dripped on my painting. It'll bother me later if I don't get rid of it. Oh, yeah, I did. Uh oh. I'm going to have to paint through that pretty damn quickly. Oh, color. Wow. It's really beautiful. It's in the purple zone. A little bit more of that orangey yellow turns it to the gray side. Final swatch. Oh, that'll do. That's enough mixing. Okay, it's got this trunk. It's really dark, really dark, really dark. And then as you come up, it's got these beautiful shadows on the right hand side. So I'm just going to use the point to make all those dancing shadows. It's really dark here, here. Comes up and it's got this big knobby bit uh, that goes, I'm going to make it go off the page. And it's got a little knobby bit and, and then the shadow goes around like that and there's this crease and then it goes up off the page and I come in not with blue watery color and put in some light tones light tones here and go back to my mix adding the shadow goes there there and there's a shadow i need thicker paint that goes across like across the trunk like that and it's put into shadow this whole branch all big knobby bit comes up and i'm getting thinner and thinner as i come up and it also has another branch mostly in shade come down here and up there there back to the mix it's got um, a branch that goes like that and a branch that goes down and a branch oh that one's nearly all there's almost no shadow on that one and then the trunk goes up and up and up there and then there's another bit and then there's another one and i'll go back to this lovely light one it's the light part of the tree that's the big shadow so i'll just finish off the tree go back to the red and with this lovely color i'm going to add in this dark here comes out and there's a knob and it is it's quite short and then it's got a little
don't like all the little furry bits on the bottom, but I'm really disappointed in what I've done here. I, mean, I really doubt that's gonna be recoverable. Just darkening up those branches. Okay, how's that looking? Really ugly. <laughs> so this is a big issue there. <sighs> okay. I'm going to let um, that be it. I'm going to sign it. Marion Chapman. Um. I'm going to say that's it. Wash my brushes. I'm staring at it to go, oh, is there anything else I could do to improve it? Nah, I think I'm going to say that's done. This one is, that's enough. 
I'm just going to take the tape off and I think I need to go and have a cup of tea. There's the image, there's the painting. I haven't included any of the bushes. I enjoyed the process. I played with the paint, I did wet and wet. I just can't resist taking a little bit off here, right there. Okay. Okay. <laughs> it's impossible to resist. All right, I'm done. Thanks for watching, guys. See you next time.